Today, we are here to explore the beautiful ruby necklace, otherwise known as little pickles or Athona capensis. The ruby necklace is a captivating plant known for its lush cascading foliage, resembling a string of vibrant rubies. In this guide, we'll cover basic light, water, and soil care, as well as repotting and propagating tips, general health, and common problems with this plant. Let's get started. The ruby necklace will thrive indoors with lots of bright, indirect light. These plants become leggy and green with low levels of light, so consider a grow light if you can't find a spot with enough in your home. Its namesake pink tones will actually develop better in bright light. The ruby necklace needs a well-draining soil mixture that does not retain too much moisture. We recommend using a succulent and cactus potting mix and adding extra perlite or pumice to it. When it's time to repot your ruby necklace, select a container with drainage holes and fill it partially with well-draining soil. Break up the roots of your plant and then tuck it into your pot, filling in soil around it. When you're all done, top dressings are an optional but fun finishing piece. To see if your ruby necklace needs water, you can check the leaves in the soil. If the leaves are shriveled and wrinkled, the soil is completely dry, and the entire plant feels light in your hands, then it's probably time to water. Once the soil is completely dry, pour water until it runs from the bottom of the pot, then leave it alone until the soil is completely dry again. Don't worry if you forget to water a lot, these plants will be just fine. A healthy ruby necklace begins as a bright green succulent and will develop a plum complexion when exposed to enough sunlight. Any signs of wilting, wrinkly leaves, or leaf drop may indicate dehydration, while mushy, translucent leaves could be attributed to overwatering. It is normal to have small, fuzzy white bits on the leaves of the ruby necklace. You will find them between the joints of the vines and they won't come off when you rub them. Look for sticky leaves, blotchy discoloration, or damage for small bugs like aphids or mealybugs on the leaves and stems. These will come off when treated. Isopropyl alcohol or neem oil can help prevent pest devastations. Just apply a thin layer on stems and leaves once a month. The ruby necklace is deemed non-toxic to animals and humans and is unlikely to cause any problems if ingested but we do not recommend this. The ruby necklace prefers warmer temperatures and does poorly in temperatures lower than 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Similarly to how the ruby necklace shows stress with a lot of sun by turning a purple color, this plant will also show that purple stress in colder temperatures. Stress is natural for succulents, just try not to overdo it. You can propagate a ruby necklace from cuttings. Simply take a cutting, allow it to callus for a few days, and then plant it in well-draining soil. Keep the soil dry until roots develop. The ruby necklace has small, daisy-like yellow flowers in the spring. And those are the basics. Take things one step at a time and be proud of the progress you make caring for your plants. Please let us know if this helps or if you have any questions. Leaving a comment, liking, and subscribing are wonderful ways to support us. Thank, Thank you.